one is Chris at Artifact. Uh, and it's part of the video series that I'm doing where we take a look at pieces in my personal collection that I use as design inspiration over at Artifact or with other projects. Uh, they could be vintage apparel, workwear, denim, military, uh, skateboard, band t-shirts, things that I just think are cool and I scroll away that uh, inspire me in one way or another. So let's uh, take a look at what's in the bag today and we can talk about it. So this is a Vietnam jungle jacket and uh, these have been pretty hot for several years in uh, street style. Uh, you'll see people in anywhere from Italy, Japan, America wearing them. They're really comfortable jacket, they're cool. Uh, when they have historical significance, they're even cooler. Um, this is one I've had for years, um, and I got it from a guy who was a picker. He would pick rag mills and stuff. I don't know if this one came from a rag mill, but uh, he, uh, he had sold it to me probably in, I wanna say the, sometime in the late 1990s, and it's just, it's just really cool. I'll, I'll explain why. Um, so first off, uh, it's badged here. So he's got a combat patch for 25th Infantry. I'm guessing he probably was in Korea because his combat infantry badge has a star to denote that he'd earned that in two, two uh, conflicts. Uh, he, he's got paratrooper jump wings, uh, theater uh, embroidered army tape. I love like th these early ones were done on kind of a khaki twill and then when the sun uh, and laundering just would bleach them out to this white color, this one's sewn real cool the way they just tuck the wings uh, be underneath the tape and in the CIB and just, you know, whoever sewed this, they were very, uh, very quick with their, their, their time. And the backside kind of gives you a little peek here. So you got some business here that I'll explain in a second. Um, this thing, this is this was well loved. Uh, this pocket is actually not even, it's not original to the jacket. Uh, the other one had been torn off and they had just fabricated another one to sew on here. They did a really nice job, especially with the back tack here for the pen holder. So whoever did this, the tailor, they did a really nice job. Um, another interesting uh, element to this is the original wearer, he had completely blown through the collar and they sewed this. And what you'd, you see this periodically, cause this is a really, this poplin is a real thin material, but they'll blow through the collar and then they'll remove the collar, flip it inside out and then sew it back on. And that's what you see here where this guy, he didn't want to get rid of this jacket. Um, and a lot of times when guys were wearing these in country in Vietnam, these would be a much darker shade and they wanted to show that they weren't uh, like an FNG uh, new guy. And uh, so they, they would want this, you know, they'd earn that fade on there. Uh, further looking on, uh, you've got his, uh, his name tape and then you've got a, a Vietnamese made Bevo woven South Vietnamese uh, jump wing. And since this guy was special forces and an advisor, they would oftentimes wear the Vietnamese insignia as well. Over here, you've got a theater made special forces insignia and look at how it's kind of wonky here. It's not symmetrical. Um, I love just kind of the folk art quality of these uh, theater made pieces. Even the airborne arc is uh, Vietnamese done as well. Pretty good job though, if you've ever sewn. I mean, it, it's not easy to, to make this stuff. These uh, staff sergeant chevrons, these are hand embroidered, so, um, and what's cool about these, they're on a sateen cloth, like what the uh, US utilities would be done, a little bit heavier cloth. And what they do is they would fold newspaper to create these chevron arcs, and then they would do their embroidery work. And when I got this, I remember years ago, there was just a little piece of newspaper hanging out, and I couldn't resist. I just, I pulled it out, and it was all yellowed. And when I kind of unfolded it, it was Vietnamese uh, newspaper, which was just, that's super cool. Uh, and then moving on, and then there's matching chevron on this side too. This is an LLDB pocket patch. Like I was saying, uh, this, this is um, South Vietnamese Special Forces. He was an advisor, probably was on an A camp or something. And what you're seeing here is it's, it's Bevo woven, very similar to the way this is, but they wanted it worn as a pocket patch. Uh, and and you've, you'll see that some of these were sewn directly to the pocket where they'd remove it, 
sew it on. This one um, was done in a pocket hanger that's actually made out of this like raft material. Um, it's a little brittle now, but this is like a rubberized um, heavy canvas. And then they just sew directly on there, trim the edge. Uh, and this is a cool piece in its own right. It was original to the jacket when I found it. Um, boy, what else do we got here? Uh, and so it's a first pattern. And what that means is it's got exposed buttons. They're the glossy style button. It's got epaulets, which were phased out. Um, the second pattern has epaulets, but by third pattern, they took those off. It's got the waist adjustment tabs. It's got a gas flap. And, you know, as the war lingered on, uh, you know, they just, they, I don't know, probably for efficiency's sake, they just did away with some of those. You can see where um, this guy was wearing a pistol belt where all this wear is along here, where it's like the buttons peeking through, you got some tears. Let's see, here's the care instructions. They're all washed out. And then here you've got your uh, nomenclature, Coat Man's Combat Tropical 63C. So that denotes that it was made in 1963. Um, now, what's peculiar about this, I've tried to research this vet and I've never been able to find out who he was, Edmonds, E-D-M-O-N-D-S. I've not found him on any of the rosters. He could have been on an early TDY team, maybe coming over from first group or seventh. I don't, I don't know, but I've had this for years. It's a gorgeous piece. I mean, the, the insignia is legit. I got it at the right time. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to know who this guy was. Um, but yeah, this, this is, like I said, I've had this since the late 90s. It's been a, it's been a piece that I've enjoyed in my collection. Um, but if you like watching these videos, remember to like and subscribe. Make a comment below if you've got any questions. Thank you for watching. Take care.